Different wind conditions ask for a different trim on the kite. Today, I'll tell you all about it. What's up everybody? You're watching SA Masterclass. Today, I'm at the Slifter, which used to be my home spot once upon a time. And we're gonna be talking about trimming the kite to the wind conditions. Also, we'll be looking over the steering line connections on the kite, the width of the bar and what an effect that has on the steering. And last but not least, the core CIT systems. In case you're more interested, in one subject or another, check the description down below. In there you can see the time code and skip to the point you want to see. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about the trim adjuster on your bar. Usually you would use this to power up the kite or depower the kite when the wind gets really strong. But you can also use it to fine tune the kite to the right trim adjustment in the wind conditions you have. This depends on the discipline you're riding and on the wind conditions you have out there. Usually what you're fighting between is a kite that doesn't backstall because it's too powered up and a kite that's nice and responsive because if you depower your kite too much, you will lose responsiveness in the steering and lift on your jumps. Therefore, you wanna play with it to make sure you're exactly in between. You can play with it by standing on the beach, pulling down your bar all the way, do this in a safe manner, don't just yank it down, but pull the bar down all the way and keep it there for a little bit. If your kite shows a tendency to backstall, and backstall is that moment when your kite flies backwards in the wind window, that's the moment where you want to depower the kite a little bit. As soon as you can keep your bar all the way down and you notice that your kite is not backstalling, this is the perfect setup for most riding conditions. If by any chance the kite doesn't show any tendency to backstall and you might feel like the kite is too depowered but you don't have that extra space to power it up more, you can always go to the wingtip of the kite, adjust the steering line one knot higher. When going out for unhooked freestyle, I would often depower my kite a little bit more, so I'm really sure it's not going to backstall as soon as I do a trick and land the trick riding downwind. On the other hand, if I would go out in waves, I would actually power the kite up more, so I actually can backstall the kite a little bit. This is because I want to have that full control when I'm riding down the line to position the kite a little bit deeper in the wind window. But if you're still a beginning rider, this might be too distracting and therefore depower it a little bit so it doesn't backstall. For big air, I do the same. I make sure the kite is just slightly too powered up. If I would keep the bar down and all the way down during my entire jump, I would kill the kite. In other words, the kite would not fly at a normal speed anymore, but it would actually sit too deep in the wind window. This is obviously not good, but for my takeoff, I find that I get that extra lift because it's a little bit deeper in the wind window and closes off and catches more wind. But during my jump, I obviously have to depower a little bit because otherwise that kite stays in front of me. And if I don't let it fly, I won't get the lift I need either. So next to the trim adjuster on the bar, we can also adjust a couple of things on the kite itself. For instance, the steering line connection that I have right here. On the core kites, you'll see two knots. We have a little arrow that points out the spot which we think is best suited to connect your line. But what these lines do is make your steering lines shorter or longer in comparison to your power lines. So this will give your kite overall more or less power. Personally, I always ride it on the top. This does give the kite a little bit more tendency to backstall because it powers up the kite, but it also gives me full control on my adjuster. If you're advanced and you really know how to adjust your kite properly, I would always say put it on the top knot because it can give you that little bit of extra power 
you might need in your big air session. But otherwise, just go with the recommended setting, which is the lower knot right here. Moving up from there, we get to the point where the line connects to the wingtip of the kite. Over here, we have three options, and these have an effect on the steering pressure of the kite. The more your line is connected to the tip of the kite, the lighter your steering pressure is going to be. If you move it more to the inside, your steering pressure becomes a little bit more. Often people ask me if this also changes the steering speed of the kite. I would say it doesn't, because it's still connected to the same part on the kite. The only thing that changes is the leverage that you have on the wingtip, and therefore the power you need to input on the bar to make the kite go around. So another thing that has a lot of influence on the feeling of the kite is the bar, and especially the width of the bar. Right here, I have the Core Sensor 3S Plus bar. This bar has the possibility to go from 50 centimeters wide to 46 and a half centimeters wide. Now, why would you want to play with that? On big kites, it can be very useful to have a wide bar because you can give loads of steering input and therefore make the kite turn. On small kites, you don't need that much steering input. So if you use a very big bar on a small kite, it might become a little bit too reactive. That's for instance when you could go from the outside setting to the inside setting. This will make the kite a little bit more easy to fly, less nervous, and especially when you start doing unhooked tricks, you don't want the kite to be nervous. So another option to put it on the inside of the bar. With core, it's very simple. You can just press it out, turn it around, and then your bar went from 50 centimeters to 46 and a half. Just in case that 46 and a half isn't narrow enough for you, Core offers a wake style bar. As you can see, it's quite a bit narrower at 40 centimeters wide, and I love riding this bar, and it actually has my preference of riding for a couple of reasons. If I ride a shorter bar, it means that I have less bar flying around when I do my tricks. A bar spin goes slightly easier, and usually I don't need to give a lot of bar input. You might have seen it, but my loops usually go quite low because I don't steer that hard. I don't need to steer it hard, not even with a wake style bar. Last but not least, we have the core CIT system. These are three connection points on the leading edge with which you can change the characteristics of the kite. When riding the kite in a freestyle setting, the kite will pull more in a C-shape, providing more constant power and more progressive turning around the tip of the kite. I love this setting when I go out for big air. You lose a little bit on the deep power, but this is something you don't really need that much when riding big air. I prefer to have a stable frame over deep power. When going into the wave setting on this kite, the kite will open up a little bit more, providing for more deep power. And this is especially nice when you go out on the wave. You can really switch off the power of the kite and pull down when you need it. There is more power on demand, but you lose a little bit of the rigid framing of the kite. Then there is also the in-between setting, which combines the best of both worlds. And this is also the setting that the kite will be shipped in. When looking at all of the other kites, there is always slightly different tweaks that the kite will have when changing those connection points, but in general, it's always the same. The knot closest to the tip of the kite will pull it more in a C-shape, providing more constant power, and going all the way up on the leading edge towards the middle will open the kite up, giving it more power on demand, but also less of a rigid frame. So it's up to you whether you prefer the more deep power or the more rigid frame and the constant power in loops. And with that, we get to the end of this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this video. If so, give me a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions. I guess it's time for me to go kiting. I'll see you on the next one.